Welcome to my lecture online. Now this integral is a really interesting integral because there's different ways in which we can do this integral and in each case we'll end up with a different answer. Now it's an equivalent answer but it's different and in the first instance when you try to work it out it appears as if they're not equivalent to one another because when you plug in values for the angles you'll get different answers. At least you think you get different answers. So we're going to show you two methods. We're going to show you how the answers do differ and then we're going to show you how we can find some means of showing that the two answers are indeed equivalent to one another. So stay tuned and so we're going to try to find the integral of the sine cube of x divided by the cosine cube of x. So the first thing we're going to do is realize that the sine divided by the cosine can be written as a tangent. So we're going to write this as the integral of the tangent cube of x times dx and then we're going to split it up as a product. So now we're going to write this as the integral of the tangent squared of x times the tangent of x dx. And then we realize that the tangent square of x can be written as the secant square of x minus 1. So this can now be written as the integral of the secant square of x minus 1 times the tangent of x times dx. So now you realize that this can now be written as two separate integrals. So we'll go ahead and do that. So this becomes equal to the first integral which is equal to the secant square of x. I'm going to reverse order those and you'll see in a moment why we do that. So I have the tangent of x times the secant squared of x dx for the first integral and then minus the integral of the tangent of x dx for the second integral. And then, so we can integrate this a little bit easier, we're going to replace the tangent of x by the sine over the cosine of x. So this can be written as the integral of the tangent of x secant squared of x dx minus the integral of the sine of x divided by the cosine of x dx. That makes this one a little bit easier to integrate. All right, now we need to recognize that if we let u for the first integral, if we let u equal the tangent of x, which of course is equal to the sine of x divided by the cosine of x, then du will be equal to the derivative of that. So the derivative of this using the quotient rule, with the denominator times the derivative of the numerator, minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. And what that gives you then is this gives you equal to 1 over the cosine square of x, which is equal to the secant square of x and of course I need a dx in there as well times a dx times a dx which means that if I look at this here and I look at this over here I have a du and then tangent of x will be equal to u so the first integral then becomes equal to the integral of u times du minus now we have the integral of the sine of x divided by the cosine of x. So that's the integral of the sine of x divided by the cosine of x dx. Now on this one here, if we let the denominator, the cosine of x equal u, then the de derivative would be the negative sine of x times dx. So if this is a du, I will need a negative sign here and I'll need another negative sign over here, which will cancel, of course, that negative sign. So now I have a u in the denominator and a du in the numerator and I can integrate that one as well. So this becomes equal to u squared over 2 and the minus and minus cancel out so that would be plus and so that becomes the natural log of the denominator cosine of x plus a constant of integration. And then since u was equal to the tangent of x this becomes equal to 1 half the tangent square of x plus the natural log of the cosine of x plus a constant of integration and that will then become our first answer for this particular integral and it's a valid answer it will give you the correct answers when you start plugging in values for x. Now in the next video we're going to show you a second method different approach we'll get a different answer and then in the next couple of videos after that we'll show you why the answers are actually equivalent to one another and how you can verify that the answers are indeed correct. Alright, that's our first one. We'll try method two on the next video.